Have you ever wondered if there's a secret formula to success? What if I told you that over 250,000 people have discovered that the real secret is, there isn't one? Imagine finding a guide that clearly lays out the steps to achieve your dreams, just like countless others before you. This audiobook promises exactly that. By listening, you're setting yourself up for greatness, ready to achieve any goal that aligns with your values and respects others. Are you ready to be happy, wealthy and healthy in every aspect of your life? Let's take a moment to appreciate the roots of this powerful journey. Back in 1937, a groundbreaking book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill caught the attention of many, including myself, for its profound ideas. It was so compelling that I shared it with all my sales representatives across the United States, igniting a wave of motivation and success. This book became a cornerstone of our training, transforming not just sales figures, but lives. When I met Napoleon Hill in 1951, his ideas resonated deeply with me. Our partnership brought him out of retirement to continue inspiring and guiding others. This collaboration marked the beginning of an era of empowerment, showing that success is truly within everyone's reach. Are you ready to be part of this continuing legacy? Can you imagine the power of continuous inspiration? What if there was a monthly source that could reignite your drive, much like adding fuel to a fire to keep it burning bright? That's exactly what happened in 1954, when Success magazine was born. Initially created as a small digest for members of our Positive Mental Attitude PMA clubs, it aimed to provide that vital spark of motivation regularly. Have you ever felt the need for an extra push to keep your aspirations alive? From its modest beginnings, this magazine embarked on a journey of growth and transformation. It evolved in size, name and content, incorporating national advertisements and expanding its reach, eventually becoming the prominent publication known today. Despite these changes, the core mission remained untouched, to fuel the aspirations of its readers with positive and empowering ideas. These principles, dating back to a historic conversation between Napoleon Hill and the philanthropic steel magnate Andrew Carnegie in 1908 have proven timeless. The essence of Success Magazine and this book is rooted in the belief that positive ideas are as crucial today as they were in the past. They serve as the foundation for achieving greatness in various spheres of life. Have you ever wondered about the origins of self-help philosophies in the United States? This journey of discovery traces back to the impactful insights shared between two remarkable individuals, laying the groundwork for generations of success stories. Are you ready to explore these enduring principles and see where they can take you? Hill was born poor in the hills of Wise County, Virginia in 1883. He was lucky to have a cool and patient stepmother who told him not to follow his bad behavior but to get an education and set high goals for himself. As a college student, he worked as a news page editor for a magazine. He hoped to one day be able to go to law school. That changed one day, though, when he was told to talk to Carnegie. The great man thought the young writer was so good that he asked him to stay at his house. They talked almost non-stop for three days. The older guy told stories about the lives of famous thinkers and how their ideas had changed society over the years. Hill, who was young at the time, was very moved and paid close attention. A challenge. Andrew Carnegie knew how people worked. One way to get an outgoing, bold person with a lot of energy to do something is to push him. This works for people who are drive and stable in their feelings. This kind of person was the young guest, and Carnegie came up with an interesting task for him. What is there in the climate of this great nation that I, a foreigner, can build a business and acquire wealth? Carnegie wanted to know. He asked Hill, how is it that everyone here can be successful? Before Hill could answer, he said, 
I challenge you to spend 20 years studying the philosophy of American achievement and come up with an answer. Will you accept? Hill said, yes. Andrew Carnegie was obsessed with the idea that you should work for everything that is worth having in life. He was willing to take time out of his busy schedule to talk with the young author, write letters of introduction to famous Americans of the time, and pay for any out-of-pocket costs the author had, like going to meet his interview subjects. Besides that, Hill was on his own and would have to make money on his own while working on the job. After that, Hill talked to more than 500 great guys over the next 20 years. Thomas A. Edison, John D. Rockefeller, George Eastman, John D. Rockefeller, Albert Hubbard, J. Ogden Armour, Luther Burbank, Dr. Alexander Graham Bell, and Julius Rosenwald were some of them. Hill did make a living by using many of the ideas he learned from Carnegie and the other people he talked to. After eight parts, he finally finished Law of Success in 1928. Many copies of these books have been written all over the world and are still available. They have inspired thousands of people to be great performers. Hill worked as an advisor for two U.S. presidents, Woodrow Wilson and Franklin Delano Roosevelt, after Senator Jennings Randolph called him to do so. He had an impact on choices that changed the course of American history. That's right, Hill started writing Think and Grow Rich while he was working for Roosevelt seven years after Law of Success came out. It became a hit right away, and people have been wanting it ever since. Millions of people have read it and told others about it, just like I did. Although Hill wrote about Andrew Carnegie's ideas in Law of Success, Think and Grow Rich builds on those ideas. That's what Hill and I tried to do with this book, and I think we succeeded. We distilled the essence of both into a way that made them easy to understand right away. Plus, success through a positive mental attitude teaches you how to use the most amazing machine ever made. One that is so amazing that only God could have made it. This machine is your brain and nervous system. It is the human computer that computers were made to work like, but it will never be as good as us. Having a good attitude about success tells you exactly what to do and how to do it to use the power of your inner mind to help you. Think about this for a moment. Have you ever been taught how to use, moderate, control or balance your emotions, instincts, feelings, moods and ways of thinking and acting in a healthy way? Lucky you, have you ever been taught how to set high goals and reach them no matter what? If you said no, then good for you. You are about to learn a lot about yourself. If you read and follow the rules in this book, you will learn these things. What matters is what gets done. One test that should always be used to rate an inspiring self-help action book is how well it produces results or how well it inspires the reader to take action. Success through a positive mental attitude is thought to be one of the most popular books of its kind ever written by this measure. Napoleon Hill, who passed away in 1970, said it was one of his proudest moments. More than 900,000 copies have been made since it came out in shops 25 years ago. Our readers have had amazing success changing their lives for the better, facing everyday problems with courage and making their dreams come true. Many people have had big changes in their lives after reading success through a positive mental attitude. Ogmond Deno, a famous motivational speaker and author of The Greatest Salesman in the World and many other best-selling books, was one of them. When I told Dr. Norman Vincent Peale about this new book, he wrote to me, Success through a positive mental attitude is one of the few creative motivational books of our time. Anyone who wants to be successful should read it. Dennis Waitley, author of Seeds of Greatness and Psychology of Winning, told me, Your all-time classic changed my life from that of an also-ran to a front-runner. Napoleon Hill really got me going, and you are still an inspiration to me. I tell people, if you want to be an enduring winner, 
Read Success Through a Positive Mental Attitude once a year. I do it myself, and every time I learn something new, a great book, a famous book, or a historical book about one of the most important things you can learn. It's impossible to learn anything without the wise and well-thought-out ideas you and Napoleon Hill put into it. But the most satisfying proof of the book's success over the years has been the many people who have come up to me after speaking events and asked me to sign their copies. Almost always they say, I want to thank you for changing my life with this book. I could give thousands of examples, but the best one is on page. Special Instructions Listen to this book as though we, the authors, were your personal friends and were speaking to you and you alone. Make note of sentences, quotations and words that are meaningful to you. Memorize self-motivators. Keep in mind at all times that the purpose of this book is to motivate you to desirable action. Abraham Lincoln developed a habit of trying to learn from the books he read, the people he met, and from casual events in daily life. These gave him ideas for reflection, and through it he was able to recognize, relate, assimilate, and use ideas as his own. You too can convert your creative thinking, artistic talent, knowledge, personality, and physical energy into success, wealth, and happiness. This book tells you how, and if you will let it, it will motivate you to try. Look for the message in it that is applicable to you. When you recognize it, pay attention, get into action to direct your mind into desired channels, trying to answer each question at the end of every chapter during your thinking and planning time. To borrow a phrase from Pat Ryan, President and CEO of Combined International, the insurance company, I found it. This quote from W. Clement Stone says, You can't imagine how high it is unless you stretch your mind. Part 1. The Start of the Path to Success Part 1. Get to know the most important living person. Meet the most important living person somewhere in this book. You will meet him suddenly, pleasantly, and with a shock of recognition that will change your whole life. When you do meet him, you will learn his secret. He carries an invisible talisman with the initials PMA on one side and NMA on the other. This talisman has two amazing powers. It can bring you wealth, success, happiness and health, and it can also protect you from harm. We are poor, not because of God. Louisiana's S.B. Fuller was one of seven children of a black tenant farmer. He started working when he was five years old and was driving mules by the time he was nine. This wasn't unusual. Most of the children of tenant farmers went to work early because they were poor and didn't want anything better. Young Fuller was different from his friends in one way. He had a great mother who wouldn't let them live on scraps. No matter how much father wants to be rich, we are still poor. No one in our family has ever developed a desire to be anything else. No one had developed a desire to be wealthy. This idea became so deeply ingrained in Fuller's mind that it changed his whole life. He began to want to be rich. He kept his mind on the things he did want and off the things he didn't want. Thus, he developed a burning desire to become rich. The quickest way to make money, he decided, was to sell something. He chose soap. For twelve years he sold it door to door. Then he learned that the company which supplied him was going to be sold at auction. The firm price was $150,000. In twelve years of selling and setting aside every penny he had saved, $25,000. It was agreed that he would deposit his $25,000 and obtain the balance of $125,000 within a ten-day period. Written into the contract was the condition that if he did not raise the money, he would lose his deposit. During his twelve years as a soap salesman, S.B. Fuller had gained the respect and admiration of many businessmen. He went to them now. He obtained money from personal friends too, and from loan companies and investment groups. On the eve of the tenth day, 
he had raised $115,000. He was $10,000 short. Search for the light. It was late at night and dark in his room. I had exhausted every source of credit I knew, he remembers. I knelt down and prayed. I asked God to lead me to someone who would give me the $10,000 in time. I told myself I would drive down 61st Street until I saw the first light in a business. I asked God to make the light a sign that his answer was coming. It was 11 o'clock at night when S.B. Fuller drove down Chicago's 61st Street. The contractor was shocked by the question, but of course he said yes. Then write out a check for 10000 and when I bring back the money, I'll bring back another 1000 profit. Fuller remembers telling this man. He gave the contractor the names of other people who would lend him money and went into great detail about the business plan. Let's look into his secret to success. Before he left that night, S.B. We are poor, not because of God. Father has never seemed interested in getting rich, so we are poor. See, he told us, I knew what I wanted, but I didn't know how to get it. No one in our family has ever wanted to be anything else. I read the Bible and books that make me feel good for a reason. I prayed for the knowledge to reach my goals. The Bible, Think and Grow Rich, and The Secret of the Ages were three important books that helped turn my burning desire into reality. The Bible gives me the most inspiration. If you know what you want, you are more likely to see it when you see it. For example, when you read a book, you will see chances that will help you get what you want. On his person was an invisible talisman with the initials PMA on one side and NMA on the other. When he turned the PMA side up, amazing things happened. He was able to make ideas that were just daydreams come true. What's important to note is that S.B. Fuller started out in life with fewer advantages than most of us, but he set a big goal and went after it. Of course, everyone has their own choice of goal. This is what I want most to accomplish. And unless your goal is against the laws of God or society, you can achieve it. You have everything to gain and nothing to lose by trying. Success is achieved and maintained by those who keep trying with PMA. What you try for is up to you. Not everyone would care to be an SB Fuller, responsible for large manufacturing concerns. Not everyone would choose to pay the costly price of being a great artist. To many, the riches of life are quite different. A skill in day-to-day -day living which adds up to a happy, love-filled life is success. You can have this and other riches too. The choice is yours. But whether success to you means becoming rich as it did to S.B. Fuller, or the discovery of a new element in chemistry, or the creation of a piece of music, or the growing of a rose, or the nurturing of a child, no matter what success means to you, the invisible talisman with the initials PMA emblazoned on one side and NMA on the other can help you achieve it. You attract the good and desirable with PMA. You repel them with NMA. Every adversity has the seed of an equivalent or greater benefit. But what if I was born with a disability? How can a change of attitude help me, you may ask? Perhaps the story of Tom Dempsey, a boy who was disabled at birth, will give you your answer. Tom was born without half a right foot and only a stub of a right arm. As a boy, he wanted to engage in sports as the other boys did. He had a burning desire to play football. Because of this desire, his parents had an artificial foot made for him. It was made of wood. The wooden foot was encased in a special stubby football shoe. Hour after hour, day after day, Tom would practice kicking the football with his wooden foot. He would try and keep on trying to make field goals at greater and greater distances. He became so proficient that he was hired by the New Orleans Saints. The screams of 66,910 football fans could be heard throughout the entire United States when, Within the last two seconds of the game, Tom Dempsey, with his crippled leg, kicked a record-breaking 63-yard field goal. 
It was the longest field goal ever kicked in a professional football game. It gave the Saints a winning score of 19-17 over the Detroit Lions. It was a miracle that we lost, Detroit coach Joseph Schmidt said. Tom Dempsey didn't kick that field goal. It was a miracle and an answer to a prayer for many. God kicked it, Wayne Walker, a safety for the Lions, said. That's interesting, but what does the story of Tom Dempsey mean to me, you might ask. Our answer would be very brief, unless you make it a habit to recognize, relate to, assimilate, and use universal principles as your own. Then do what the Arabal says. What are the principles you can use from the Tom Dempsey story? Anyone can learn them and use them, even if they are not physically disabled. Those who have a strong desire to reach high goals will be great. Those who keep trying will be successful. To become an expert at anything, you have to practice, practice, practice. Effort and work can become fun when you set clear, attainable goals. For people who are motivated with PMA, every setback is a seed of an equal or greater benefit. To become achievers, man's greatest achievement. When Henley wrote the poetic lines, I am the master of my fate, I am the captain of my soul, he could have told us that we are the masters of our fate because we are the masters of our attitudes, whether they are destructive or constructive. Take Henry J. Kaiser as an example of a truly great man. He is a truly successful person because he has a big view of himself. Companies with the name Henry J. Kaiser have assets worth more than a billion dollars because he is kind and generous to others. He has helped the speechless speak and the disabled get back to living useful lives. And hundreds of thousands of people have gotten hospital care at a very low cost. All of this grew from the seeds of though. Henry Kaiser's mother, Mary Kaiser, gave him the most valuable gift and showed him how to use it. 1. The Wonderful Gift Mary Kaiser would help people in need as a volunteer nurse for hours after work. She often told her son Henry, Nothing useful ever comes without work. If I only leave you with the will to work, that is the most valuable thing I can give you the joy of work. 2. The most important thing in life. Mr. Kaiser said, My mother taught me some of the most important things in life. Some of these were loving people and how important it is to help others. She used to say, The most important thing in life is to love and serve other people. Some people, like Henry J. Kaiser, know the strength of PMA and what it can do for him and his country. He also knows the strength of NMA. During World War II, he built over 1,500 ships so quickly that when he said, we can build a Liberty ship every 10 days, everyone was shocked. It's not possible, but Kaiser did it. Its PMA side can get for you all the rich blessings of life. It can help you overcome your difficulties and discover your strengths. It can help you step out ahead of your competitors and as with Kaiser, it can turn what others say is impossible into reality. What the NMA force does to push back. There is a very interesting story from the South that shows how the force of NMA can push things away. There lived a woodcutter who was also unsuccessful. For more than two years, he had given firewood to a certain homeowner. The woodcutter knew that the logs had to be no bigger than seven inches in diameter so they would fit in this fireplace. One time, this old customer, he got home and saw that most of the wood was bigger than what was needed. He called the woodcutter and asked him to swap or split the big logs. I can't do that, said the wood dealer. It would cost more than the whole load is worth. With that, he hung up. So the homeowner was left with the job of splitting the logs himself. He rolled up his sleeves and set to work. About halfway through the job, he noticed that one particular log had a very large knot hole which someone had plugged up. The homeowner lifted the log. It seemed unusually light and appeared to be hollow. With a hefty swing of the axe, he split the log. A blackened roll of tin foil fell out. 
The homeowner stooped down, picked up the roll, and unwrapped it. To his amazement, it contained very old fifty and a hundred dollars bills. Slowly, he counted them. They amounted to exactly two thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. The bills had evidently been in the tree for many years, as the paper was very brittle. The homeowner had PMA. His only thought was to get the money back to its rightful owner. He picked up the telephone, called the wood dealer again, and asked him where he had cut this load. That's nobody's business but mine, the wood dealer said again. If you give away your secrets, people will cheat you every time. The homeowner tried hard, but never found out where the logs came from or who had locked the money inside. As you can see, the point of this story is not irony. It is true that the man with PMA found the money, while the man with NMA did not. It is also true that everyone has good luck sometimes. But the man with NMA will make sure that his lucky breaks don't help him, and the man with PMA will make sure that even his bad luck helps him. Someone named Al Allen worked as a salesman for the Combined Insurance Company of America. He wanted to be the best salesman in the company and tried to follow the PMA principles he read in motivational books and magazines. One of the articles he read was called Develop Inspirational Dissatisfaction. Soon after, he had a chance to use what he had read when he had a bad break. On a cold winter day in Wisconsin, Al went to every store on a city block without warning and tried to sell insurance. He didn't make a single sale that day, so he was obviously unhappy. But Al's PMA turned his unhappy feelings into motivational ones. Why, he remembered the editorial he had read, he applied the principle. Before leaving the office the next day, he told his fellow salespeople about his bad day the day before. Just wait until today. I'm going back to call on those same prospects and also more insurance than all of you put together. And Al did it. He went back to the same block of city streets and called on all the people he had talked to the day before. He made sales of 66 new accident plans. And this was an unusual accomplishment, which took place because the brakes were broken. Al Allen changed how he felt when he walked through the cold and wind for eight hours without selling a single insurance. He was able to change the negative dissatisfaction that most of us would feel after failing at something one day into an inspiring dissatisfaction that led to success the next day. Al did become the best seller for the company and was given the job of sales manager. A lot of our really successful people are able to flip the unseen charm over and use the side with the power of PMA instead of the side with the power of NMA. For the most part, we think that success comes to people who have benefits we don't have, or maybe we don't see them even though we do have them. The obvious isn't always seen. There's nothing strange about the fact that every man's PMA is his forte. After he became successful, Henry Ford was looked up to by many. People thought that Ford was successful because he was lucky, had smart friends, or was just plain smart. There's no question that some of these things were important, but there was more. Only about one person in a hundred thousand knew the real reason for Ford's success, and those few were often embarrassed to talk about it because it was so simple. Just one look at Ford at work will fully reveal the secret. A long time ago, Henry Ford chose to make the famous V8 engine. He wanted to make an engine where all eight cylinders were cast in one piece. He told his engineers to come up with a plan for such an engine. Each expert agreed that it was not possible to make an eight-cylinder gasoline engine block in a single piece. Ford told them, make it anyway, but they said, it's impossible. Ford then told them, go to work and stay on the job until you succeed, no matter how long it takes. They had to work because there was nothing else to do. They were supposed to stay with Ford. After six months, they still hadn't been able to do it. After another six months, there was still no success. It looked like nothing could work the harder the experts tried. 
Ford talked to his experts again at the end of the year. They told him that they couldn't do what he told them to do. It worked out. Ford said, keep working, I want it, and I'll get it. The engine wasn't really impossible though. With the Ford V8, Henry Ford and his company were so far ahead of their best competitor that it took them years to catch up. The Ford V8 was the most highly successful car ever made. He used PMA, and you can get the same power if you use it too. You can achieve success in realizing the chance of the impossible if you turn your symbol to the right side like Henry Ford did. You can get what you want if you know how. A 25-year-old man has about 100,000 hours of work ahead of him. Suppose he retires at age 65. How many of your working hours will be filled with the powerful force of PMA and how many will be snuffed out by the devastating force of NMA? But how do you use PMA instead of NMA in your daily life? Some people just seem to know how to use this power. Henry Ford was one of the people who helped make the Ford car. Some people need to learn. Al Allen learned by putting what he read in motivational books and magazines into practice. You can find one like this in Success Through a Positive Mental Attitude. You can also learn how to make PMA. Some people try PMA for a while, but give up on it when things go wrong. They got lucky at first, but then some bad luck turned the charm around the wrong way. They don't understand that people who keep trying with PMA are the ones who find success. They look like the well-known old racehorse Jean-Pierre. Many people thought that Jean-Pierre, a thoroughbred, had a great chance of beating Man o' War, the best racer of all time. Because of this, he was constantly trained and groomed. The second horse finally met the first one in the Dwyer Stakes at Aqueduct in July 1920. Everyone was looking at the starting post with glued eyes because it was a beautiful day. The two horses took off at the same speed and went down the track next to each other. It was clear that John P. Greer was giving Man o' War the best race of his life. When they got to the quarter pole, they were tied. They stayed tied until the eighth pole, which was the finish line. Then, in the stretch, John P. Greer got everyone up and started moving forward slowly. It was a tough time for Man o' War's rider. He made up his mind, and the jockey hit the great horse hard on the behind with his whip for the first time in his career. It looked like the jockey set fire to Man o' War's tail, because he shot ahead and pulled away from John P. Greer, like the other horse was still. Man o' War was seven lengths ahead at the finish line. However, from our point of view, what was important was how the other horse felt after losing. John P. Greer was a horse with a lot of energy. He was born to win. But this event broke him so badly that he never really got better. After that, he never won another race because he was too weak to do it properly. Even though people aren't racehorses, this story makes me think of too many men who, during the 1920s boom years, had a great attitude about success at the start. They were successful with their money, but when the Great Depression hit in 1930, they lost. They were crushed. Their mood went from good to bad, and their charm flipped to the side that said NMA. As John P. Greer said, they gave up and became has-beens. Sometimes people use PMA all the time, and sometimes they only use it sometimes. People like me, on the other hand, have never really started to use the amazing skills we have. How about us? Can we learn how to use PMA the same way we've learned other things? We know the answer is yes, because we've been doing it for years. This is what this book is about. We will show you how to do it in the steps that follow. It will be worth the time and effort to learn PMA, because it is the key to success. Discover the most important person alive. The day you understand PMA is the day you will meet the most important person alive. What does he look like? If you look at your own life, you are the most important person alive. Look at yourself. Is it true that you carry around an unseen charm that has the letters PMA on one side and NMA on the other? What does this symbol or force really do? The charm is your mind. 
PMA is having a good attitude. Having a good attitude is having the right attitude. What is the right way to think? This is usually made up of the good traits that words like faith, honesty, hope, positivity, courage, initiative, kindness, tolerance, tact, punctuality, and good sense stand for. A person with a good mood sets high goals and continues to work hard to reach them. The reverse of PMA is NMA, which is a bad mental state. When the writers of success through a positive mental attitude looked into great men for years, they found that having a positive attitude is the one simple thing that all of them had in common. PMA helped S.B. Fuller get past the problems that came with being poor. Even though Tom Dempsey's leg was hurt, PMA drove him to kick the biggest field goal ever in a professional football game. And Henry J. Kaiser was able to build a Liberty ship every 10 days because he had a good mood. Al Allen set a new sales record by going back to the same prospects who had turned him down the day before because he could turn his charm around and wear it correctly. Are you sure you know how to use your magic talisman? It's possible that you do or don't. You may have worked on and improved your PMA to the point where life is now fulfilling all of your desirable goals. But if you haven't, you can learn how to use PMA's magic to free your power as you read this book. Throughout this book, the author talks about what a good mental attitude is and how it can be formed and used. It is the most important of the 17 ideas in this book for getting success that are worth following. Getting things done requires a mix of PMA and at least one of the other 16 success concepts. Master them and start using each one as you read Success Through a Positive Mental Attitude. When you make each principle a part of your life, you'll have the most powerful positive mental attitude possible, which will lead to success, health, happiness, wealth, or any other clear goals you may have in life. Feel free to take these as long as you don't break any rules of endless knowledge or other people's rights. These kinds of violations are the worst kinds of NMA. You can keep your mind upbeat by following the steps in Chapter 2. If you learn that technique and use it in everything you do, you will be on your way to getting everything you want. Number 1. Thoughts to guide you. 1. Talk to the most important person you know. You are that person. Your success, health, happiness and money will depend on how you use your symbol. I can't do that, said the wood dealer. It would cost more than the whole load is worth. With that, he hung up. So, the homeowner was left with the job of splitting the logs himself. He rolled up his sleeves and set to work. About halfway through the job, he noticed that one particular log had a very large knot hole which someone had plugged up. The homeowner lifted the log. It seemed unusually light and appeared to be hollow. With a hefty swing of the axe, he split the log. A blackened roll of tin foil fell out. The homeowner stooped down, picked up the roll and unwrapped it. To his amazement, it contained very old 50 and a hundred dollars bills. Slowly, he counted them. They amounted to exactly $2,250. The bills had evidently been in the tree for many years, as the paper was very brittle. The homeowner had PMA. His only thought was to get the money back to its rightful owner. He picked up the telephone, called the wood dealer again, and asked him where he had cut this load. That's nobody's business but mine, the wood dealer said again. If you give away your secrets, people will cheat you every time. The homeowner tried hard, but never found out where the logs came from or who had locked the money inside. As you can see, the point of this story is not irony. It is true that the man with PMA found the money, while the man with NMA did not. It is also true that everyone has good luck sometimes but the man with NMA will make sure that his lucky breaks don't help him, and the man with PMA will make sure that even his bad luck helps him. Someone named Al Allen worked as a salesman for the Combined Insurance Company of America. 
He wanted to be the best salesman in the company and tried to follow the PMA principles he read in motivational books and magazines. One of the articles he read was called Develop Inspirational Dissatisfaction. Soon after, he had a chance to use what he had read when he had a bad break. On a cold winter day in Wisconsin, Al went to every store on a city block without warning and tried to sell insurance. He didn't make a single sale that day, so he was obviously unhappy. But Al's PMA turned his unhappy feelings into motivational ones. Why, he remembered the editorial he had read, he applied the principle. Before leaving the office the next day, he told his fellow salespeople about his bad day the day before. Just wait until today. I'm going back to call on those same prospects and also more insurance than all of you put together. And Al did it. He went back to the same block of city streets and called on all the people he had talked to the day before. He made sales of 66 new accident plans. And this was an unusual accomplishment, which took place because the brakes were broken. Al Allen changed how he felt when he walked through the cold and wind for eight hours without selling a single insurance. He was able to change the negative dissatisfaction that most of us would feel after failing at something one day into an inspiring dissatisfaction that led to success the next day. Al did become the best seller for the company and was given the job of sales manager. A lot of our really successful people are able to flip the unseen charm over and use the side with the power of PMA instead of the side with the power of NMA. For the most part, we think that success comes to people who have benefits we don't have, or maybe we don't see them even though we do have them. The obvious isn't always seen. There's nothing strange about the fact that every man's PMA is his forte. After he became successful, Henry Ford was looked up to by many. People thought that Ford was successful because he was lucky, had smart friends, or was just plain smart. There's no question that some of these things were important, but there was more. Only about one person in a hundred thousand knew the real reason for Ford's success, and those few were often embarrassed to talk about it because it was so simple. Just one look at Ford at work will fully reveal the secret. A long time ago, Henry Ford chose to make the famous V8 engine. He wanted to make an engine where all eight cylinders were cast in one piece. He told his engineers to come up with a plan for such an engine. Each expert agreed that it was not possible to make an eight-cylinder gasoline engine block in a single piece. Ford told them, make it anyway, but they said, it's impossible. Ford then told them, go to work and stay on the job until you succeed, no matter how long it takes. They had to work because there was nothing else to do. They were supposed to stay with Ford. After six months, they still hadn't been able to do it. After another six months, there was still no success. It looked like nothing could work the harder the experts tried. Ford talked to his experts again at the end of the year. They told him that they couldn't do what he told them to do. It worked out. Ford said, keep working, I want it, and I'll get it. The engine wasn't really impossible though. With the Ford V8, Henry Ford and his company were so far ahead of their best competitor that it took them years to catch up. The Ford V8 was the most highly successful car ever made. He used PMA, and you can get the same power if you use it too. You can achieve success in realizing the chance of the impossible if you turn your symbol to the right side like Henry Ford did. You can get what you want if you know how. A 25-year-old man has about 100,000 hours of work ahead of him. Suppose he retires at age 65. How many of your working hours will be filled with the powerful force of PMA and how many will be snuffed out by the devastating force of NMA? But how do you use PMA instead of NMA in your daily life? Some people just seem to know how to use this power. Henry Ford was one of the people who helped make the Ford car. Some people need to learn. Al Allen learned by putting what he read in motivational books and magazines into practice.
You can find one like this in Success Through a Positive Mental Attitude. You can also learn how to make PMA. Some people try PMA for a while, but give up on it when things go wrong. They got lucky at first, but then some bad luck turned the charm around the wrong way. They don't understand that people who keep trying with PMA are the ones who find success. They look like the well-known old racehorse Jean-Pierre. Many people thought that Jean-Pierre, a thoroughbred, had a great chance of beating Man o' War, the best racer of all time. Because of this, he was constantly trained and groomed. The second horse finally met the first one in the Dwyer Stakes at Aqueduct in July 1920. Everyone was looking at the starting post with glued eyes because it was a beautiful day. The two horses took off at the same speed and went down the track next to each other. It was clear that John P. Greer was giving Man o' War the best race of his life. When they got to the quarter pole, they were tied. They stayed tied until the eighth pole, which was the finish line. Then, in the stretch, John P. Greer got everyone up and started moving forward slowly. It was a tough time for Man o' War's rider. He made up his mind, and the jockey hit the great horse hard on the behind with his whip for the first time in his career. It looked like the jockey set fire to Man o' War's tail because he shot ahead and pulled away from John P. Greer like the other horse was still. Man o' War was seven lengths ahead at the finish line. However, from our point of view, what was important was how the other horse felt after losing. John P. Greer was a horse with a lot of energy. He was born to win. But this event broke him so badly that he never really got better. After that, he never won another race because he was too weak to do it properly. Even though people aren't racehorses, this story makes me think of too many men who, during the 1920s boom years, had a great attitude about success at the start. They were successful with their money, but when the Great Depression hit in 1930, they lost. They were crushed. Their mood went from good to bad, and their charm flipped to the side that said NMA. As John P. Greer said, they gave up and became has-beens. Sometimes people use PMA all the time, and sometimes they only use it sometimes. People like me, on the other hand, have never really started to use the amazing skills we have. How about us? Can we learn how to use PMA the same way we've learned other things? We know the answer is yes, because we've been doing it for years. This is what this book is about. We will show you how to do it in the steps that follow. It will be worth the time and effort to learn PMA because it is the key to success. Discover the most important person alive. The day you understand PMA is the day you will meet the most important person alive. What does he look like? If you look at your own life, you are the most important person alive. Look at yourself. Is it true that you carry around an unseen charm that has the letters PMA on one side and NMA on the other? What does this symbol or force really do? The charm is your mind. PMA is having a good attitude. Having a good attitude is having the right attitude. What is the right way to think? This is usually made up of the good traits that words like faith, honesty, hope, positivity, courage, initiative, kindness, tolerance, tact, punctuality, and good sense stand for. A person with a good mood sets high goals and continues to work hard to reach them. The reverse of PMA is NMA, which is a bad mental state. When the writers of Success Through a Positive Mental Attitude looked into great men for years, they found that having a positive attitude is the one simple thing that all of them had in common. PMA helped S.B. Fuller get past the problems that came with being poor. Even though Tom Dempsey's leg was hurt, PMA drove him to kick the biggest field goal ever in a professional football game, and Henry J. Kaiser was able to build a Liberty ship every ten days because he had a good mood. Al Allen set a new sales record by going back to the same prospects who had turned him down the day before because he could turn his charm around and wear it correctly. Are you sure you know how to use your magic talisman? It's possible that you do or don't. 
you may have worked on and improved your PMA to the point where life is now fulfilling all of your desirable goals. But if you haven't, you can learn how to use PMA's magic to free your power as you read this book. Throughout this book, the author talks about what a good mental attitude is and how it can be formed and used. It is the most important of the 17 ideas in this book for getting success that are worth following. Getting things done requires a mix of PMA and at least one of the other 16 success concepts. Master them and start using each one as you read Success Through a Positive Mental Attitude. When you make each principle a part of your life, you'll have the most powerful positive mental attitude possible, which will lead to success, health, happiness, wealth, or any other clear goals you may have in life. Feel free to take these as long as you don't break any rules of endless knowledge or other people's rights. These kinds of violations are the worst kinds of NMA. You can keep your mind upbeat by following the steps in Chapter 2. If you learn that technique and use it in everything you do, you will be on your way to getting everything you want. Number 1. Thoughts to guide you. 1. Talk to the most important person you know. You are that person. Your success, health, happiness and money will depend on how you use your symbol. What are you going to do with it? You can make a choice. Your mind is your secret charm. On one side it says PMA, which stands for Positive Mental Attitude, and on the other it says NMA, which stands for Negative Mental Attitude. These forces are strong. PMA is the right way of thinking for every situation. It can bring good and beautiful things into your life. NMA keeps them away. Having a bad mood takes away everything that makes life worth living. You should ask yourself, how can I develop the right mental attitude? Describe it. If you're not successful, don't blame God. You can get a burning drive to succeed like S.B. Fuller did. How? Focus on what you want instead of what you don't want. How? For the same reason that S.B. Fuller did, read the Bible and motivational books. Ask God to show you the way. Look for the light. Question yourself. Do you think it's okay to ask God for help? As bad things happen, they always lead to something good, even better for people with PMA. Things that seem like problems can sometimes turn out to be chances to do something great. Tom Dempsey found this while he was hurt. Ask yourself, are you going to take some time to think about how you can turn problems into seeds of benefits that are equal to or greater than the problems themselves? Except for the gift that can't be bought, the joy of work, love and help other people. This is the most important thing you can do in life. You will get big amounts of success, just like Henry J. Kaiser did. You can, if you learn PMA. As you continue to listen to this book, ask yourself, will you look for ways to improve your PMA? Negative thoughts can be very effective at keeping people away. It can stop the good luck that comes your way from working out. Ask yourself, can PMA bring good luck? What can I do to make PMA a habit? If you turn your sadness into motivational unhappiness with PMA, like Al Allen did, you can make money from it. Change your mood, find motivation in your unhappiness, and turn a failure into a success the next day. What do you think the best way is to create inspiring dissatisfaction? Take the unlikely option and make it happen by getting PMA. Like Henry Ford told his workers, tell yourself to keep going. Ask yourself, do you have the guts to set great goals and work toward them every day? Don't let the way you think turn you into a has-been. Act on the self-motivator. Success is gained by those who try and kept, by those who keep trying when you are feeling down and depressed, or any other negative situation that makes you feel defeated. This is how to keep from being crushed with PMA. As a self-motivator, universal principles say that every problem has the potential for a benefit that is equal to or better. People who have a strong desire to reach high goals will become great. 
successful people with PMA are those who keep trying and don't give up. It takes practice, practice, practice in any human action to become very good at it. Prayer is the most powerful thing a person can do. Part 2. You can make the world a better place. Now you know that PMA is having a good attitude and one of the 17 success concepts is having a good attitude. When you start to use these ideas together with PMA in your job or to solve your own problems, you are on the right track to progress and success. That means you are on the right track and moving in the right direction to reach your goal. If you want to achieve anything useful in life, you must use PMA, no matter what other success rules you use. PMA is the thing that makes any mix of success concepts work together to get something important done. When NMA is mixed with some of the same principles, it leads to crime or evil, and some of the things that come from it are grief, disaster, tragedy, sin, illness, and death. 17. Success Principles The authors have taught classes, given talks, and run a male school on these 17 success principles for many years. PMA, the science of success, is the name of the course. Here are these 17 rules. A hopeful frame of mind. Purpose that is clear. Putting in extra effort. Correct thought. Having self-control. The genius. Put faith to use. A liked personality. Initiative on your own. Fired up. Attention under control, working together, getting better at losing, creative ideas, making a time and money budget, taking care of your mental and physical health, using universal law and cosmic habit force. These 17 success ideas were not made up by the writers. They came from the life stories of hundreds of the most successful people our country has known in the last 100 years. After today, you can look back at all of your successes and failures for as long as you live. In other words, if you remember these 17 concepts forever. Giving yourself the responsibility to follow and use the 17 rules in your daily life can help you create and keep a happy mood. There is no other way that we know of to keep your mind optimistic. Now is the time to take a brave look at yourself and see which of these 17 rules you have been following and which ones you have been ignoring. In the future, use the 17 principles to measure both your wins and mistakes. Soon, you'll be able to figure out what has been stopping you. What shall you do if you have PMA and fail? Should you use PMA and still not be successful, it could be because you are not utilizing all the principles that are required to achieve your specific objective. You might want to read about S.B. Fuller, Tom Dempsey, Henry J. Kaiser, Al Allen, The Woodcutter, and Henry Ford to see which of the 17 success concepts they used or didn't use. In real life, you might look at someone who is a has-been. Do the same thing as you read the case studies and the parts that come after them. Think about which of the 17 success concepts are being used and which ones are being left out. At first, the principles may be hard to understand and put into practice, but as you listen to success through a positive mental attitude more, each one will become clearer to you. After that, you can use them. If you read all the way through Chapter 20, you will be able to use the 17 success rules to check your work. A chart for self-analysis can be found there under the title Success Quotient Analysis. Has life been unfair to you? The people who have signed up for the PMA Science of Success course have often felt like they had failed in some area of their lives. The person might be asked, why, as soon as they walk into this class? Why are you taking this course? Why haven't you been as successful as you'd like to be? I think the reasons they give are very sad because they show why things fail. My father was an alcoholic, so I never really had a chance to get ahead. You know, I grew up in the slums, and that's something you can never get out of your system. I only went to grammar school. All of these people are basically saying that life has been unfair to them, 
They are putting the blame for their mistakes on other people and things that happen to them. They say it's their genes or the place where they live. They start out with a bad attitude, which makes things harder for them. But NMA is holding them back, not the outside problem that they say is making them fail. As a child, I learned that there's a great story about a preacher who was having a hard time getting ready for his talk one Saturday morning. The weather was bad, his wife was shopping, and his young son was cranky and bored with nothing to do. Mr. finally gave up and grabbed an old magazine, which he quickly leafed through until he found a big, bright picture. The world was shown on a map. He tore the magazine page into small pieces and threw them all over the living room floor, saying, Johnny, if you can put this all together, I'll give you a quarter. The preacher thought it would take Johnny all morning, but ten minutes later, someone knocked on his study door. It was his son with the piece put together. The minister couldn't believe Johnny was done so quickly, with all the papers in order and the world map back in its place. An elder asked, Son, how did you do that so quickly? Oh, stated Johnny, it was easy. On the other side, there was a picture of a man. I just put a piece of paper on the bottom, put the picture of the man together, put a piece of paper on top, and then turned it over. I figured that if I got the man right, the world would be right. The minister gave his son a quarter, and you've given me my sermon for tomorrow too, he stated. This idea is very wise. If a man is right, his world will be right. You can change your world if you are unhappy with it. But first, you have to change yourself. Things will be fine in your world if you are right. That's what PMA is all about. The troubles in the world tend to fall in line when you have a good mood. You were born to win. Did you ever think about the fights you won before you were born? An expert on genes, Amram Scheinfeld, says, Stop and think about yourself. There has never been someone else like you in the history of the world, and there will never be another you during all of time. Because you are such a unique person, many battles had to be successfully finished in order to make you. Think about it. Tens of millions of sperm cells fought a big fight, but only one won. That one won was the one that made you. It was a big race to get to one thing, a valuable egg with a tiny nucleus inside it. The goal that the sperms were trying to reach was about the size of a needle point, and each sperm was so small that a person would have to magnify it a million times before they could see it. Still, the most important fight of your life was fought at this tiny level. The heads of all the millions of sperm carried 24 chromosomes, which were very valuable. There were also 24 chromosomes in the egg's tiny nucleus. Each chromosome was made up of beads that looked like jelly that were tightly tied together. Scientists believe that all of your genetic traits are linked to the hundreds of genes that were found in each bead. In the sperm, the chromosomes contained all the genetic material and traits that your father and his ancestors passed down. In the egg nucleus, the chromosomes contained the traits that your mother and her ancestors passed down. The fight to survive has been won for over two billion years, and your mother and father are the result of that. Then, the fastest, healthiest, and winner sperm joined with an egg that was ready to make one tiny live cell. The most important person in the world's history had begun to live. You beat the worst odds you will ever have to face to become a winner. For all intents and purposes, you have received from the vast repository of the past all the possible skills and abilities you need to reach your goals. Whatever problems and issues come up, they are not even close to as big as the ones that were already solved when you were conceived. You were born to be a winner, Victory is in every living thing. Take the case of Irving Van Cooper, who is a very well-liked judge in the United States. But this was not at all how young Ben Cooper saw himself, how a scared boy got PMA. Ben grew up in St. Joseph, Missouri, in an area that was close to a slum. It was hard for his immigrant father to make ends meet as a tailor. Many days, they didn't have enough money to eat or heat their small home. 
take a coal bin and walk down to the nearby train tracks. That's where Ben would find coal pieces. Ben felt bad about having to do it. He would sneak through the back streets to avoid school kids seeing him, but they often did. One group of boys really liked it when they would wait for Ben on his way home from work and beat him up. They would throw his coal all over the street and send him home crying. For this reason, Ben was afraid and felt bad about himself almost all the time. Every time we break the pattern of loss, something has to happen. Our inner success doesn't show up until we're ready for it to. Ben was moved to do good things after reading a book. Robert Coverdale's Struggle by Horatio Alger was the song. It told the story of an adventure of a kid like him who had to deal with tough situations but did so with the courage and moral strength that Ben hoped he had. The kid read all of the Horatio Alger books he could get his hands on. He felt like a hero as he read. He spent the whole winter in a cold kitchen reading stories about bravery and success, which gave him a good mood without him even realizing it. Ben Cooper went down to the train tracks again a few months after reading his first Horatio Alger book. He often saw three dark figures far away, behind a building. The first thing that came to his mind was to run away. Then he thought about how brave the heroes in his book were, and he didn't turn. Instead, he tightened his grip on the coal scuttle and marched straight ahead, as if he were one of the heroes. The fight was very rough. All three boys jumped on Ben at the same time. His bucket fell, and he swung his arms around with purpose, which caught the bullies off guard. One of the boy's lips and nose were hit by Ben's right hand, and his stomach was hit by his left. Ben was shocked when the boy stopped fighting and ran away. The other two boys were hitting and kicking him at the same time. One boy was pushed away, and the other was knocked down by Ben. As if he were mad, he jumped on the second boy with his knees and punched him over and over in the stomach and jaw. There was only one boy left. He was in charge. He jumped on Ben and then pulled him off of him so he could stand up. The two boys stood there and looked each other straight in the eyes for a second. The leader then took a few steps backwards. He also ran away. Ben may have been angry, but he picked up a piece of coal and threw it at the person who was running away. After that, Ben saw that his nose was bleeding and that the punches and kicks he had taken had left him with black and blue marks all over his body. It was well worth it. Ben had a great day. He got over his fear at that moment. Ben Cooper wasn't much stronger than he was a year ago, and the people who were trying to hurt him were also pretty tough. The difference was how Ben thought about things. He had gone into Danga even though he was scared. He decided that bullies would no longer control him. He was going to change his life on his own, which he did. Connect with a great picture of yourself. When the boy fought the three bullies on the street that day, he gave himself a name. He wasn't fighting as his scared and hungry Ben Cooper, he was fighting as Robert Coverdale or any of the brave and heroic characters in Horatio Alger's books. Seeing yourself as successful can help you break the habits of self-doubt that years of NMA have built up in your personality. Connecting with a picture of yourself that motivates you to make the right choices is another important way to change your world. It could be a phrase, a picture, or something else that means something to you. What do you think your pictures will tell you? The head of a foreign company based in the Midwest was at his office in San Francisco. He saw a big picture of himself on the wall of Dorothy Jones's office. Dorothy Jones is a private secretary. Dotty, that's a rather large picture for this sized room, isn't it? He wanted to know. When I have a problem, do you know what I do? Dorothy asked. She didn't wait for an answer before showing by putting her arms on her desk, resting her head on the fingers of her folded hands and looking up at the picture. Boss, how the heck would you solve this problem? She wanted to know. Dottie's comment came off as pretty funny, but her main point is shocking. There might be a picture at work, at home or in your wallet that can help you answer a big question in your life. It could be a picture of your mom, dad, wife, husband, Benjamin Franklin 
or Abraham Lincoln, it could be a saint's. What does your picture mean to you? One way to find out. Ask your picture a question when you need to make a big choice or deal with a tough problem. Pay attention to find the answer. As one of the 17 rules of success says, having a clear sense of purpose is another important thing you need to change your world.